Hi, welcome to episode 10 of the Just One End podcast. My name is Elizabeth Zimmerman, but you can call me Liz. I am coming to you from Cochranville, Pennsylvania, where I live with my husband, Greg, our two children, Eric and Tilda, and our dog, Millie. Today is Sunday, September 17th. Um, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Algebrina, and there is also a Ravelry group for the podcast called the Just One End Podcast Group. Um, so episode 10, it's a little bit of a milestone, you know, it's, I don't know why exactly 10 just is, is a nice round number. So, <laughs> so we made it to episode 10. Um, also with episode 10, we are going to do the 100 subscriber giveaway. Um, so if you remember what I'm giving away is, uh, two skeins of shelter by Brooklyn Tweed. This is the thistle colorway, which is, um, a purple. Um, so it's showing up a bit dark, sorry, GI. Um, it's showing up a little bit dark, but if you look on their website, you can see a more, uh, true, more true image of the color. Um, but I am going to go ahead and pick the winner. Um, there were 40 posts in the Ravelry group. Uh, mine was the first one, so we could knock that out. And then there's also a multiple, uh, post in there. So I'm knocking out one of those. Um, so we're going to pick number two through 39, um, and anything above the multiple just gets knocked down by one number. So, Alexa, pick a number between 2 and 39. Your random number between 2 and 39 is 9. 9. Okay, so post number 9 is Bobby's grandma. So, <laughs> so you're the winner. Um, so, the prompt was, uh, who is the most knitworthy person in your life? Um, and what Bobby's grandma said is, um, unsurprisingly, the most knitworthy person in my world is my five-year-old grandson, Bobby. Um, he is proud to tell people granny made me this, especially when it's a dinosaur jacket complete with a spiky hood. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, Bobby's grandma, congratulations. If you can reach out to me and let me know, um, your address, then I will get this sent off to you. So congratulations. So moving on from there, um, I do have a couple of finished objects to show you. So um, I'll start with this one first. So I don't have any child size sock blockers, so I don't have anything to show it on. But these are the socks that I was making for Eric. Um, there's two of them. Uh, the yarn is um, Beautiful Mess Yarnworks Tweed Base, which is a fingering weight base. Um, and the color is Sprout which is a great green. Sorry, I have a little bit of shadow today. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, but I didn't use a pattern for these. Um, for one of my previous episodes, I was talking about making socks to fit a growing boy, um, since my son is also five, um, much like Bobby. Um, <laughs> and, um, and somebody suggested ribbed socks. Um, so I did decide to make him some socks uh, with you know, ribbing over most of it. Um, so I made a ribbed cuff, which is, I don't know, probably three inches or so. Um, and then I did a German short row heel. I just looked something up online to, to figure out how to do that. Um, and then I switched to the body of the foot and I went to just stockinette on the bottom and then kept the ribbing on the instep um, so that it's got a little bit of stretch to it um, as this foot grows wider. Um, and then I just did a um, star toe, which is um, a decrease that's kind of done, it's like a moving decrease, so it kind of makes these little arches um, in, in the decrease, which was pretty cool. Again, I just looked it up online to see uh, what to do. So, um, yeah, so I made two of those. I think I may have had one finished last week. I think I had one done. So, so now they're both done. Um, that is finished object number one. And my second finished object is, um, my pink poncho. <laughs> so I've been calling this poncho Maddie in pink, um, because the girl I'm making it for, her name is Maddie. Um, and she's adorable. Seriously, this little girl, she's got the cutest dimples. Um, but so I am, make, I was making this poncho. Um, I do not have a pattern for it because the original was commercially, um, created. I believe she got it at Target. Um, <laughs> and it was also, um, knit in panels and then sewn together. So what I had to do is I, I took the original. She did, the mom did send me the original that I could work from to, you know, try and get as close as I could. 
Um, so I basically just read the knitting. Like I could, you can see the stitch definition well enough that I could see when increases happened and, and um, you know, I could count some stitches, do some calculations, all of that. So I got as close as I could. It's not exactly right. Um, my biggest concern right now is that I may have made it too big. Um, I'm hoping not. And if, if so, she'll at least be able to wear it next year, if not this year. Um, hopefully she'll still be into pink ponchos with little ears <laughs> at that point. But uh, anyway, so, so let me show you the poncho. Uh, so this is the body. It's going to be hard to show you the whole thing. So this is the body. Um, and then this is the hood. And it's got little ears. Yeah. Um, so, so first of all, the yarn is by Wanderlust Hues. Um, they, it's called That Pink Door. Um, she is on Etsy. Um, I had to order a third skein, um, after I started. Um, it turns out I used most of the third skein. Um, I knew when I stopped after last episode that I was running pretty low and I still had a lot more to do. Um, I didn't realize how much more I had left to do. <laughs> so I had gotten to the point where I had knit down to about the length that I wanted to stop for um, just the, the straight knitting in the round. Um, at that point I had to do some short rows to do some shaping and then add the ribbing and then make the ears. Um, that took almost the entire skein <laughs> of the new stuff that I ordered. So this, this is what's left. That's it. Tiny, tiny little ball of yarn. <laughs> So good thing um, I did order that third skein. Well, I had to, it, it wouldn't have been finished. So um, yeah, so used a, a lot more yarn than I thought. So let me give you just a basic rundown of the construction that I did. I did take some notes um, so that I could recreate it if I had to. Um, and honestly, if I made it again, there are some adjustments I would make because I'm not 100% happy with it. But, you know, considering what I was working from, I, I'm pretty pleased. <laughs> so. Um, so I started with the hood. I did a provisional cast on. Um, I did some shaping in the hood to get some, I did some short rows here to um, have it dip down in the front, uh, which is how the original did. Um, and then I left holes for the ears. I just went back and forth in the middle. And then I think I picked up on either side and worked back and forth to make the gaps. And then I rejoined um, at the top of the gaps and just went straight again. Um, and then I just did a little bit of um, shaping here, just did some decreases, and then I kitchenered, um, kitchenered together at the top. So that was the hood. Uh, then I picked up stitches and did the band on the front, uh, which is just a two by two rib. So this is still a little bit damp, so I'm gonna have to lay it out again when I'm done, <laughs> but. Um, so I did that first and then I did a provisional cast on to start the body. Um, so I, so I started from the top. I did just, just some stuck in it for a while. And then I started doing the pattern. Um, so on the back, it's just knit with some increases to do the shaping, but on the front, um, it's got this section at the front that is five cables that go down, um, with some, uh, reverse stuck in it. In, in the spaces between them um, and on the sides. Um, so I did a two, a, I guess you would call it two by two rib um, with just a twist going down. So the original was braided, but that would have required six stitches and that was gonna be too thick um, with this yarn. So I just did a two twist. Now, one thing that is kind of driving me crazy is it's really gappy on the sides. Um, this side especially, there were increases there, um, and they've just, it's really gaped. So I think I might go back through that um, if I have enough yarn and kind of just add some more stitches to tighten it up a bit. Um, we'll see when it's fully blocked. Um, I'm actually considering, this is superwash, and it's going to a mom of a toddler. So I'm considering putting it through the wash myself and maybe putting it through the dryer, <laughs> which I know you're not supposed to do, really. I mean, it's super washed, so technically you could, but you really should dry it flat. But I'm considering doing that just to see how it'll survive. Maybe it will kind of fold it up a little bit. I know it's super washed, so it's not really supposed to, but 
I just want to see what would happen to it. Um, and if anybody's going to ruin it, I would rather be the one to ruin it than her. I would hate for her, for me to send it to her and then ha have it go through the dryer and be ruined the first time and then, you know, have her feel terrible and maybe not tell me. So, <laughs> so I'd rather test it out myself um, and see how it does um, before I send it off to her. So tell me if you think I'm crazy, but I, I'm considering that. So anyway, so I did the, did the patterning on the front. Um, and then um, I did short rows on both the front and the back to give it um, like a, a semicircle edge. Uh, so it really does dip down in the front and the back. You can see on the sides um, if you look. There it is. Yeah, you can see on the sides that kind of dips up and then down. Um, so, so it's got short row shaping on both sides. And that's what ate up all a good portion of the yarn because like this much is short rows. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, so. And then uh, when I was done with the construction uh, and I, I did end with a two by two rib on the edge. Um, when I was done with those pieces, um, I used a three needle bind off to um, attach the hood to the body. And then I made ears. So, <laughs> so the ears was kind of interesting to figure out. I tried like three or four different times to get a shape that I liked and I didn't really find anything um, that was working. So I got a um, I think it was a red heart free pattern for like a baby hood that had ears in it. So I borrowed that ear shaping, at least to start it. So it actually has a, um, you cast on, um, the stitches to start with, and then you do increases in the middle. So you just do a knit front and back, um, for a few rows and that kind of gets it to flare out. And then I did increase or decreases on the sides, um, just like I would with a, a sock until I got to the point where I thought it was a good enough shape to just do the Kitchener stitch. So um, I'm pretty pleased with it. The, the free pattern that I was looking at for the ear, they actually um, did, they knit it flat and then they seamed it and I didn't really want to do that. So I just kind of modified it, did what would work with for me. So um, yeah, so that's my poncho. So it's done. Um, I'm going to obviously have to wait for it to dry completely. We'll see if I send it through the washer and dryer. Uh, and then I'm hoping to get it off to her this week. So there it is. So on to whips. Um, since I finished the Maddie and Pink poncho just last night, um, I haven't really cast on things that I've been planning to. So hopefully next week I'll have more, more whips. But um, today, I have one that you've already seen me working on. So this is my Freckled Whimsy Sock Nanny. Um, and living in here is my Jelly Roll Sock, which is pretty much exactly as you saw last time. <laughs> I think I've done like three rounds. I can't remember if I'd shaped the heel. I know I was working on the heel flap. If not, I don't know. So I'd at least gotten into the heel. Sorry, it's all tangled. Um, but so this is my, my, uh, jelly roll sock, which is by the same designer as the Rose City Roller. Um, it's a two color. This hot pink here is a mini that I got from Mothy and the Squid. And the main color, um, so here is a Violet Beauregard from Beautiful Messy Yarn Works. Um, and it's like a, a white with blue and pink in it. So I've worked on it a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, obviously most of my time has been taken up with the poncho, so I haven't <laughs> put a ton of work into it, but uh, it, it's coming along. So I will continue to work on that. Um, then my other whip is um, a new one. So this is a new cast on. This one I was just kind of in the mood to cast something on um, and I got inspired, so I did. Uh, this is in my A Simpler Home project bag, which has bees on it. Um, what I'm making is, it's a free pattern on Pearl Soho. It's called the Big Herringbone Cowl. Um, and this is what it looks like. 
So it's a really cool stitch. I've never done herringbone before, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, it's on size 15 needles. So I'm using my huge uh, size 15s from my Chowgo interchangeables. Um, I, oh, it calls for 17, uh, but I don't have 17 and I'm not going to go buying them. So I, I just went with 15. Um, also I'm only making half the length. Um, I think you're supposed to cast on, I don't know. I cast on a hundred and something. You're supposed to cast on 200 and something. So I didn't really feel like making one that was long enough to wrap. I just wanted one that went around. Um, I also don't think I had enough yarn for the whole thing. So I just wanted to make it with whatever I had. Um, so the yarn is, uh, you saw elastic actually, it was, it's a recent acquisition. This is the Manos del Uruguay uh, Maxima yarn in the Tiger Lily colorway, which is a great autumn color. I hope that's focusing, there we go. It's got some browns and some oranges and yellows in there. Um, it's doing some interesting pulling with this brown. Um, well, actually it's, it's all the colors, but I find the brown most noticeable. Um, I do have two balls of this and I'm not sure, I haven't figured out yet if I'm actually going to be using the second ball or if I'm just going to stop when I finish with the first one. Um, I might weigh it out and see how far along I am and, and how much further I really want to make it. But, um, so this is my in, inspired and just randomly decided to cast on the project. So I have spent a little bit of time on this. Um, it is what I'm going to be working on uh, now that my poncho is done until I do some new cast-ons. Because um, with fall coming around the corner, I'd actually really like to be able to use this uh, sooner than later. But then I'll, I'll move on to other promised projects because I know my husband's got some that he's waiting on. So <laughs> um, I have a few acquisitions to share with you. Um, more than a few, but. <laughs> so I have an older sister um, who crochets. And she is really just working with acrylic right now. Um, she works with the Red Heart Super Saver and that's it so far. Um, which, not to be a yarn snob, I mean it has its place. I work with it with the family Christmas stockings because that's what they were started with. So that's what they're knit out of. Um, but I'm trying to get her to branch out into, <laughs> into um, different options. You know, maybe an acrylic blend or something, something different. Um, she went with me to Maryland Sheep and Wool earlier this year, and she said everyone was speaking a foreign language because she didn't know what anybody was talking about. So I'm trying to ease her into the uh, crafty world, or the fiber world. Um, so I um, sat down with her, and we looked at the Knit Picks website. Um, so I had already planned on making her some socks, um, so I was going to order some Felici. And then I said, you know, in order to get the free shipping, how about you add a few things on and, and we'll get you some yarn too. Um, what she ended up adding on was acrylic, but it was a nicer acrylic than Red Heart and um, also cotton. So so she is, you know, branching out. She's going to do some dishcloths. So so I picked up some Felici. Um, I picked up, I they don't have the colorways printed on them, so I have to look. Uh, this is Spring Blooms. So it's a green and blue and pink. Um, and then I also got Stone Harbor, which is like a pastel blue and gray and um, yellow. Um, I also got, uh, I think this is Captain Nemo, which is blues and purples. And then I got a Candy Shop, which is this one here. It's bright green, yellow, uh, white, blue, and pink. There we go. Um, so I picked all of those up. Um, I got two balls of each because I'm planning to make socks. My sister, when um, I said I wanted to make socks for her, uh, she said that she likes long socks, unfortunately. So <laughs> I've only really made shorty socks, so they, uh, they are gonna be longer socks um, because that's what she's requested, but I, I do have two balls of them. If I was making shorty socks, one ball would probably be enough because I don't make that, I don't make socks all that large. Um, but I couldn't remember which colors she wanted. I'd put it all into my basket on Knit Picks, and then I had to end up clearing my browser history for, um, like trying to fix my printer or something. So, um, so I lost the cart because we hadn't checked out before. So I 
think that the two colors I got for her are the Stone Harbor and the Candy Shop because she couldn't decide which one she wanted, so I got them both so she could see them in person and, you know, kind of pick from there. Um, and then I got the other two for myself, or really whichever one she doesn't pick also uh, for myself. So I got the uh, Captain Nemo and the Spring Blooms for me. So um, once again on my self-striping kick. I also mentioned last time that Amy of Stranded Dye Works had lost, launched her own website, um, and I tried it out to make sure everything worked for her. Um, <laughs> so kind of me. So, uh, so I did pick up two skeins of yarn, and those have arrived. So this is Flamingo Legs on Oasis, I believe. Yes, this is her Oasis, which is a uh, 7525 um, Merino Nylon. Superwash Merino Nylon. And then I also picked up Castaway DK, um, the Castaway DK base. And this is her colorway called Naive Watercolor. Um, and the Castaway DK is 100% uh, Superwash uh, Merino. So I picked those up and those arrived. Uh, and then lastly, um, I went on Etsy and I visited my favorite bag maker, which is uh, Roberta from Steel City Stitcher. Um, and I picked up um, a DPN Cozy, because if you're going to get something Steelers themed, Steel City Stitcher seems like the logical choice. Um, <laughs> and then I also picked up a, um, <laughs> I love this. So I picked up a, I'm just going to say it. I picked up a ball sack. So, <laughs> so this is. The one that I ordered, it's um, it's just a small um, fabric sack um, that is intended to hold a ball of yarn. So it's kind of like a yarn condom or yarn sleeve, um, just you know, fancier and and more functional. So um, so you can see in there, I've got the uh, Violet Beauregard colorway um, for my jelly roll socks. Um, the interior has these two snaps so you can snap those um, and if you wanted to put two small balls of yarn in here you could use them as yarn guides um, you know to have the yarn coming from each of them um, so <laughs> so they're really cute uh, they're really functional I mean they they keep your yarn nice and neat within your project bag um, they are not big enough to use as a project. They are intended to only hold um, to hold the yarn. Um, but <laughs> so so this is what I picked up. You can see it's got really cute little um, chipmunks on it with fall. Um, oh, what am I thinking? Leaves and acorns and such. So I thought it was really adorable. Um, and she threw in a second ball sack. <laughs> so I have a pair of ball sacks. Ah! <laughs> so, um, so this one is a Doctor Who um, ball sack. She obviously knew that she would be safe in sending me one of these because all of my Doctor Who paraphernalia, um, Doctor Who project bags, my exploding TARDIS one, and my, my Dalek bag both came from her. Um, and it included this uh, lavender sachet as well. So it smells very nice. So she threw these in for me, which was very sweet. So thank you, Roberta. Um, what she also did was she threw in one... For you guys so this is the most adorable pattern ever oh my gosh let me show you this side it is um it says hugs and cocoa there we go hugs and cocoa and it's these little marshmallows hanging out in a cup of cocoa um and it's also got a lavender sachet and a stitch marker in there it is so cute oh my gosh so um so this is going to be the prize for um, my first knit along. So we will segue very smoothly into that. Um, <laughs> so the, um, the knit along I've decided is going to be a hat along. Um, so since we're coming up on fall and you can use a hat in either fall or winter, um, and I have a hat that I need to get knit, so <laughs> in my queue anyway, I've decided a hat along sounds like a great idea. <laughs> So it's also not a huge undertaking. I mean, hats are, as far as, you know, projects go, it's, they're on the smaller side. Um, they take a little bit less time to knit, um, but you can do any variety of hats. I mean, there's all sorts of um, really complicated or really simple patterns out there. So I think it adds enough variety that, that people should be able to, um, you know, find a pattern that'll work for them. 
So just some ground rules, ground rules with the kelp. Um, so I'm gonna call it a hat along, which means you can either knit or crochet. Um, it's not restricted just to knitting. Um, we're gonna start on October 1st and we're gonna end it on November 1st. Um, so no whips, um, I really do. If you want to enter it to win, then you should start it um, October 1st or later. Um, I've decided I only want to do one entry per person. Um, it, you are certainly welcome to knit multiple hats, but when you post it in the finished object thread, which I'll open up in Ravelry, um, edit your post and add your hats into the same, the same single post. Um, I just, I want to keep it fair for people. Um, just, you know, even though you're knitting more, it's good for you, but <laughs> you know, I, I really want it to be equally that if you participate, you get the chance to win. So, um, so that's the way we're going to do it. Um, you're welcome to double dip. Um, you know, there's no restrictions there, double, triple, whatever, um, you want to do so you can enter it in any other knit alongs that may be going on. Um, if I hear about any other knit alongs that, um, I know about too, I'll let you know for sure. Um, we'll put that into the chatter thread, which I'll also open. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and then I'll close it on November 1st and then I'll pick a winner on the, um, the episode after that. Um, so that's how we're going to work it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything, just, you know, reach out to me and let me know. Because um, this is my first one. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, and we're going to wrap up today with some podcaster love, as I typically do. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this one short. I've been watching, you know, some that you've already heard about. I'm just catching up on them. Um, if I bring them up again, it'll probably be because I finally caught up. Um, <laughs> so... Someday you'll hear the second mentions on this. But um, I do want to call out two specifically. Um, so the first one is Kim Smith Happy, um, which is uh, Kim, who is the owner of Alter Knit Universe, which is based in the UK. I'm sorry, I think she's coming up on three years now. I think she said it's having its third birthday uh, coming up soon. Um, it's a really cool yarn store from what I can tell. I mean, I haven't obviously been there yet, but um, but from what she's uh, said about it, she it's... Um, you know, eco-friendly, recycled, um, cruelty-free, all, all of the good for the world, um, <laughs> as much as she possibly can in this yarn store. It's, it's just a really cool concept. It's obviously something she cares a lot about, um, and it's, she's just very passionate about it. So, um, I found her through, um, through the Stranded podcast. She's a friend of Amy's, and she popped up in a vlog. I think it was because she had a trunk show. Uh, Amy had a trunk show at Kim's shop, um, and they've been friends for years. Um, and then, so she was having this trunk show in this UK city, and the shop owner had an American accent. And I was like, nobody's going to address that. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm just confused. Um, so, so I, you know, I just... I ended up following Kim on Instagram and, and you finding out more about her because I that was driving me crazy. I was really curious. I was like, why does she have a yarn shop in the UK and how did they become friends? <laughs> so anyway, so I figured out all their backstory. Um, but she was uh, raised in America but moved over to the UK when she was a teenager and has lived there for plenty long enough to absolutely claim the UK as her home. So, so um, anyway, so she has a podcast. I think she has four episodes out. Um, she just recently returned. She, she'd been on hiatus for a while. Um, so she put out her fourth episode recently. Um, and I really enjoy watching her. So you should check her out if you haven't already. Um, and then the second podcast I've been watching, um, is the Wool Slayers, which is Sal and Al. Um, it's Sally and Alan in the, uh, they're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, in Texas. And they are just two friends who, um, I think they met in knitting group and they just got together and started a podcast. Um, I love these ladies. <laughs> it's like, I am so sad that they live half a country away that we just can't hang out. Um, they, I binge watched all of their episodes this week. I actually was watching them all in the beginning of the week. And then I put off finishing the rest of them until I knew I was going to be recording soon because I wanted to keep up the enthusiasm of having just watched them. Um, so I finished watching their latest episode last night. Um, and they are just, they're so much fun. They're just funny and they just, oh, they are just a ton of fun. I, I really enjoy watching them. Um, and I feel, <laughs> so I, I started watching their episodes. I started commenting on almost every one. 
Um, and then I found out that Sally is in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in. And so, and so I found them on Facebook and I found them on Ravelry and I sent the friend request. Now I did all of this over several hours, but it was late at night. So I'm sure that the next morning they both woke up <laughs> to like 20 interactions with me all of a sudden. So I, I, I like seemed like a stalker immediately, <laughs> but I am having so much fun getting to know these ladies and they're absolutely becoming one of my favorite podcasts. I'm talking with my hands a lot, sorry. So the work in progress that I showed, the herringbone cow, um, that was inspired by Alan because Alan had uh, been working on one in one of the episodes that they showed. So, um, so I loved it and I knew I had the great yarn for it that was gonna make it perfect for fall. So, so I cast that on. So <laughs> I've also added probably half a dozen projects to my favorites um, from projects that they've, projects that they've shown. Um, and I just, yeah, I'm really enjoying their podcast. Oh, and I will say there is one more podcast that I found, um, that I really enjoy. They have one episode out so far. Um, it's the West 7th Wool podcast, um, which is the name of their shop. It's a pair of shop owners. I believe they're a married couple. Um, like I said, only one episode, so I'm still getting to know them, but, <laughs> but they, they are also so much fun. They, I think that married couples make some of the best podcasters because they have the best banter. Um, and you can just really see their relationship in, in when they're talking about their knitting and everything. Um, so it's a lot of fun, but, uh, West seventh wool, definitely one to check out. Like I said, they've only done one episode, but I'm looking for, seriously, it made me laugh out loud several times. Um, and it's, it is a yarn store, so some of it is focused on, you know, stock updates and things that are going on in the shop. Um, but otherwise, it's also just the normal podcast stuff. So they show what they're working on. They have some back and forth about their personal stuff. Like, it's just really, really enjoyable. So definitely worth checking out. So that's it this week. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit of a short one. It's I've been recording for 48 minutes. But I know at least 10 minutes is probably me restarting things or getting up to walk around and get stuff that I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> so, um, so thank you for joining me. Um, if you would like to, go ahead and hit the like um, and or subscribe button. Uh, we do have actually 125 subscribers now, so yay. Um, and feel free to tell a friend, you know, if you enjoyed it, um, you know, spread the word. It's, it's always fun to... Um, get a wider audience, get more interactions with people. I mean, this is why I do it. I've said this before, but I really like having my virtual knitting community, um, especially in my yarn desert with no physical knitting community. So, <laughs> so thank you for joining me. I hope you'll come back and I will see you next time. Bye. Why aren't you focusing? So, I ended up losing it and, and couldn't talk to her about it. This doesn't matter. Okay, that's that. Yada, 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 yada. It does not. Really? Wait, I can't talk today. Oh, shoot. I forgot my DPNs. I forgot to grab my little bit of yarn. Oh. Duh. Uh, blah, 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 blah.